I'm standing in an area of land known as the Pyrenees, and this road cutting here has revealed some truly spectacular rock formations. These bulbous rocks here look almost alien, and the bands of varying depositional proportions throughout this one are truly gorgeous to say the least. The mineral enriched quartz that has been shot through the bedrock here around 440 million years ago is my favourite though. The beautiful colours and shapes is just Ah, I can't even explain how beautiful I find these rock formations. I could literally spend hours staring at this cutting. When erosion works to whittle down the sedimentary material surrounding the erosion resistant quartz reefs, it reveals these strange looking shapes, and each of them feature their own unique style of appearance. The composition of minerals featured within these reefs are all different. Some are more abundant in certain minerals, and others less. Some are stained in iron, and others feature rich colours from blacks, purples, oranges, and more. Some carry gold, and others are devoid of it. I've driven past this cutting numerous times, but this was the first time that I've stopped and properly investigated it, and honestly, I was blown away. There's so much going on here, and there's so much unique beauty to be witnessed in this one single spot. So let's all take a moment out of our busy, stressful lives to appreciate the beauty afforded to us by this immaculate planet of ours, by taking in the spectacular appearance of these ancient rocks. These rocks here are some of the oldest in Victoria. They were laid down during the Middle Cambrian period some 510 million years ago, and the sedimentation continued through until the early Ordovician, with it ending around the 482 million year mark. The origin of these rocks is derived from the erosion of a relatively new landmass that was slowly being thrust out of the deep ocean to the west of here, and the tectonic collision that was responsible for this formed a massive volcanic arc known as the Staveley Arc. This arc began its life around 530 million years ago, and the Moiston Fault marks the location where the ancient subduction event that created this volcanic arc occurred. As this arc and the land around it began to be uplifted out of the deep sea, the sedimentation that formed the Pyrenees strata that we see here began. Much of it seems to have been derived from the erosion of the newly forming landmass that was uplifting mighty mountain ranges to the west, with additional sediment most likely coming from Antarctica too, which was located in a snug position to our south. And that's where the rocks from this road cutting begin their story building up as sedimentary deposits layer by layer in a deep sea environment before proceeding tectonic collisions eventually uplifted this stretch of the ocean, in the very same way that the land to the west of it was uplifted, by chaotic tectonic collisions that would entail numerous subduction events and even a continent to continent collision too. These tectonic collisions folded, buckled, crumpled and tilted the rock layers from being horizontal to being almost completely vertical in their orientation as the land was squeezed from east to west by the many tectonic events that would occur here between the 440 to 360 million year mark. But one last thing would occur to these rocks before this land would become more or less geologically stable, and that would be the intrusion of a massive magma chamber which occurred here around 360 million years ago. This massive churning magma chamber cooked these rocks, leading to additional metamorphic changes that would see them transformed into hornfowls. A hornfowl, simply put, is when rocks are metamorphosed by high heat but low pressure, and this occurs when rocks make contact with a nearby intruding magma chamber or from friction related processes that are inflicted to a strata by tectonic related processes. In this case, it was metamorphosed from a nearby magmatic intrusion, and this intrusion of falsic magma never got a chance to erupt. Instead, it cooled and solidified beneath the earth. Now that we have the geological context down, we can begin to get an idea of why these rocks look the way they do. Any quartz that you see here wasn't originally laid down in a deep sea. They intruded into these rocks much, much later, where they would be shot up from deep within the earth, through the many faults and fractures that were created on mass in the bedrock during the tectonic collisions in a fluidic state, only to solidify into these beautiful quartz reefs once a drop in pressure and temperature allowed them to do so. They are a byproduct of the subduction event, and they were originally deposited deep within the earth, meaning many kilometres of erosion has occurred since they were shot through the bedrock to reveal them to begin with, 
showing just how much of this land has been eroded down through the eons, as this entire landscape featured a major mountain range that once stretched many kilometers high up into the sky. But in present day, it was little more than small, rounded, hilly stubs, a shadow of its former self. You can see this is a strata dominated by sandstone and mudstone that were carried here by turbidity currents from the west, which are essentially major underwater landslides that occur on the edge of a continental shelf, which are responsible for propelling sediment for tens to hundreds of kilometers into the deepest part of the sea, known as the abyssal plain. And this land was once that abyssal plain. Upon looking around and reading the rocks, it became evident that a river once flowed over this area too and I can find some nice rounded rocks around here that provide that information. This area that I'm standing in is actually the last to feature a surface outcrop of this ancient Cambrian Age Pyrenees strata, because as we head further west, the land becomes dominated and smothered by recent lava flows in a prolific manner. At least 50 meters or 164 feet worth of basalt dominates most of the land from here onwards. As you can see, the basaltic eruptions have formed a major plateau, and this is actually a great example of the type of land that Ballarat was built on. I'll try to make a separate video on this, but this area here, where the basalt rises, is literally the type of land the western part of the town was built on. Now obviously, the basalt didn't just decide to stop here. In both cases, it went beyond this point, but the nearby rivers wore it down, and the Yarrawi in Ballarat did much of the same. So I hope you enjoyed viewing these beautiful rocks as much as I did. The Pyrenees Strata is one of the oldest rock units in Victoria, and even though the Pyrenees have been highly eroded, it's very evident, even in present day, that it was once a remarkably tall mountain range. Now before we end this video, I just want to give a big shout out to these pieces of carbonate rock that I randomly found on the roadside when I was shooting footage of the volcano here. This was stupidly cool to see and totally unexpected. This is a great example of the oceanic origin of this land, and it takes us back to a time when this area was a shallow sea, and coral reefs were able to dominate the land. It appears that this basalt has smothered some of these coral reefs, which appear to have once outcropped here, or it was possibly exploded out by a volcanic eruption from deeper within the earth, but I think it's the former rather than the latter. So rather than just ending on this note, I figured I might as well include a portion of the huge and even by my standards ridiculous amount of footage that I took of this cutting and the surrounding quartz. I'll add in some chill music and allow you to appreciate some of the extras without my bogan voice. So if you're keen to see some rock porn, and trust me, I'm really tempted to include some really cheesy soundtrack to fit the theme like... But I won't. So here you go, and... Thanks for watching.